At this place in history, we're in Barrie with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins, and we're checking out a new exhibit today. So tell us all about it. Sure. So we have Myths and Legends of the Connecticut River Valley. Uh, this is an exhibit that came to us from the Connecticut River Museum, and it's really a folklore exhibit. So there are some stories that definitely relate to Vermont, and I thought it would be fun to explore this exhibit and look at one of these stories in depth. Okay, which one is that? So in the exhibit, they call it the spilled milk murder. Oh. Uh, we in Vermont call it the uh, Orville Gibson case. Amanda Gustin from our staff, who's been uh, doing some research on this and puts our exhibits together for us, is going to kind of lead us through that story. So Amanda, who was Orville Gibson? Orville Gibson was a farmer from Newbury, Vermont, a uh, dairy farmer, like many people in Vermont at that time. and. I have to be honest, we don't know a whole lot about exactly what happened in this case, which is I think one of the reasons the mystery of it endures to this day and why people are still fascinated by it to this day. December 31st, 1957, Orville Gibson wakes up his usual time about 3.30 in the morning. He went out to the barn to start milking the cows and start his day's chores. Later that morning, uh, his wife called the police and said, he's not on the farm, I don't know what happened to him, he hasn't come back. And they pretty immediately started treating it as a missing persons, um, as an actual ca police case for that. When they went back to the barn, they found what may have been some signs of a struggle. You know, Steve talked about it being called the spilled milk murder. The reason for that is that one of those signs was struggle is that a milk pan had, had been kicked over and possibly damaged or crushed, scuffs on the ground, but you know, you're doing your chores in the morning, could they have come from that? Could right. they have come from a fight? They don't know. Three months later, they found his body in the Connecticut River, and it had been tied up. So pretty clear at that point that there was something out of the ordinary going on. They were thinking that something had gone wrong because of what had happened in the days leading up to his disappearance. Hmm. So on Christmas Day, 1957, Orville Gibson got into some kind of altercation with his hired man on the farm. And we know that pretty quickly it hit the rumor mill um, in town. People are casting blame all around. It was under this atmosphere that he disappeared. So there are kind of two competing theories, right? Of, of what happened to him? What, what are those yeah. two main theories? Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of two and a half, right? So theory number one, it, it was a murder. He was murdered by a, a couple or perhaps an entire group uh, of people, and it was specifically and explicitly in retaliation or following on this rumor mill that had happened about this altercation with his hired man. Theory number two is that they formed a mob and they just meant to scare him. The third theory is that he actually um, took his own life because the police had gotten involved with this, with this altercation with his hired man, because the rumor mill had started to grind within the community, he was feeling pressure, uh, ashamed, frustrated at the way he had been treated and talked about in the community. But under that theory, he did tie his own hands and feet. Is this possible? Is it impossible? P people can argue it both ways. Yeah. Right. So when I'm seeing something here, Life Magazine, I, why is that part of the exhibit? Did this garner national attention? It did. So it's, it's got all of the elements to quickly become a Vermont story. There were editorials, uh, news items, photographs, really across the country, and some, some articles you read will cite newspapers as far away as Scotland and Europe wow. actually talking about this case. It caught on to the imagination, in a way. At this place in history.